Hey everyone, Kevin here. What I'd like to do in this video is show you Elgato's Game Capture HD software. You can download it from their website. It's here, Game Capture for Windows. And this is compatible with HD60, HD60S, which is what I've got, HD60 Pro, and the 4K60 Pro, which is just coming out just now. And this is it. This, this is the, the software. You can. This is an alternative to XSplit, to OBS, and that kind of thing. They provide it free of charge. And you can see you can minimize the window, expand the window, sorry, or you can put it into a window like I've got here. And it's fairly easy to use. I'll show you how it all works, but basically in, in the heart of the screen, top left-hand side, you've got the preview of what you're recording. In this case, I've got an old arcade game. Down the right-hand side, you've got you know, all the details for your video capture, your game audio. Underneath here, you've got different scenes, and down here, you've got your recording functionality. So I'll break down each part one by one, and it'll give you an idea of how this works. If you're an OBS user, if you're an XSplit user, it might help you see whether this is something you would like to use yourself. So I'm just streaming this from my RetroPie. It's connected to my HD60S. And if I expand it up, you will see everything down the right-hand side at one time. So what have we got? Well, you've got the preview area here in the heart here, the football game. Classic football game from... Um, I can't remember who makes this game, actually. Um, underneath, you've got scenes. And, you know, scenes... See if we're messing around here. Seems a different things you can add. You can see here you've got, you know, you can add banner, banners, donations for Twitch and things like that. These are all kind of Twitch oriented. You've got different scenes here. Different ones you can, now this one is, where is it? Is it there? Yes. So this camera is actually from my laptop. And I'll show you all of that in a second. More overlays down the bottom. And depending on what game you're using, um, you can set up a different setup. There's a different scene. Okay, so what you can do here is if you go to add overlay, you can get scenes. There's lots of curated scenes. You can add scenes in from popular games. But I think for most people, what they'd be doing here is adding like a camera or something. Those. So there's the cam link, and I've got my RX100 Mark III plugged in. I don't have the lights on, which is why it's maybe a little bit uh, dark, but that's... Um, you can see I've got it here. I can move it around anywhere I want. I can obviously make it larger or smaller. If I don't want to use that camera, I can use the, the camera from my laptop. Or I also have, right now, I have my Logitech Brio. This is a 4K webcam, but it can also do 10, uh, 1080p at 60 frames per second. Now, this, you know, when I'm streaming a game and I'm playing it here, this would probably make, be, make the most sense because I'm facing the camera. And... You can see here, I can make it as big as I want. The only thing, the criticism I would have about this is I haven't seen, there might, there might be a way to do it, um, but I don't know if there's a way to display my webcam and the cam link at the same time, because if you look here, when you choose webcam, you're only assigning one webcam. I don't know if there, are, there might be a way to do this. I'm not sure, so don't quote me on it, but I don't believe there's a way to do both cameras. And when I've been recording, occasionally with OBS, I have been recording both cameras at the same time. I've been switching between both of them very quickly. In here, what you would have to do is kind of just go there and then switch like that. It's not a major problem, I don't think. You can add images, you can add videos, you know, clips and stuff. You can add text. Um, add your text here. So, Kevin is the coolest. Apparently it's true. It's in text. You add it to your page, you can colour it, etc. And then when it's there, you can expand it. Now, Obviously, this is a very simple thing I've done here, but you can imagine if you're streaming or you're recording a video, you could... Uh, I'll get rid of that webcam there because it seems to have frozen. Um, you could put thanks to my subscribers, uh, click on the link in, um, uh, below, check out the description below. You could add anything you want with this text and you can combine it with images and videos. Anything you want, really. You could put it just underneath your webcam and you've got add a web page as well. So... Uh, Yeah, so I'll put Google there. And look, there's the web page. Quite cool. So there's all the different streams. You can set up all these different uh, scenes and then switch between them anytime you want. You can save them anytime. You can see there, save scenes. Um, fairly easy to use. And underneath you've got record. I'm not going to push live because I have connected to my YouTube account. You can see here, 10 megabytes per second, 
1080p at 60 frames per second commentary. It's telling how long I've had. This is just how long I've actually been live with the software. I've been on for six minutes. Tells you I've got 70 gigabytes free in my hard drive. And I believe that is just take a photo or is that take a cap screenshot? Now, up here I've got 1080p at 60 frames per second. Here I've got the primary device as the game capture device, but because I've got the Gato Cam Link inserted as well, it does work with that. And if I change to that, it will switch to my camera. So it's now switched to my camera and it's, it's going at 1080p at 60 frames per second. I should be able to change that because that can do up to 1080p at 60 frames per second. Um, allow 60 frames per second. Don't reduce. Right, so now I'm recording at 1080p at 60 frames per second with my cam link. Now, what I want to do is get rid of this, um, rid of this, this, um, remove overlay. Right, don't come back. Don't come back, I don't want that. Um, right, so we'll switch back to the game. And as you saw, you choose your capture device. In this case, I actually have two capture devices. I've got my cam link, linked to my RX100 Mark III camera. I could have two Elgatos, or three Elgatos. I've only got one Elgato HD60, and here is how you configure it. You can see at the top here, input 1920 by 1080 at 60 frames per second. I can change the input device and I can assign it. So say it's a Wii U, I can say it's a Wii U and it will default to the settings for that. Xbox One, PC, and it will just configure certain, certain settings for each system. You can change the quality and obviously quality will change how much you know you were uploading. HDMI color range. E seven seven twenty etc. Lots of options here. You can reset to default. So you can see whenever I make a change, it's it's kind of flashing the image because it's it's changing what is being recorded, uh, what's been previewed and set up. And um, now here you've got Kevmo doing on YouTube, and that's because I've connected my uh, YouTube account. Clicking on this will take me to my live streaming page on YouTube. I don't need that. Now here is where I add or delete an account. I can delete my YouTube account here and I can add an account. So I've added YouTube, I could add Twitch, I could add Facebook, I could add Mixer, and then I could just, you know, sign, I can just select whatever one I want there. This one's for custom, daily motion, all the, all the major ones are there. And I'm uploading at 10 megabytes per second. There doesn't seem to be a way to upload higher than that. I don't know if that's a problem for anyone, but you can decrease the value right down if you don't have a good internet connection. So, you know, for some people, you might be down at two megs per second. You've got higher upload speeds, you might go up to there, and then you go to there. And that um, privacy public category game, these are all like, you know, what you would be um, assigned to on YouTube or on whatever you are, Twitch. Now you can see the game audio and you can, you're, I recommend doing some tests before you choose a game audio. You want to be able to hear yourself speaking from your commentary but um, you want to be able to hear the game as well. So mess around with it and see where you get to a good level with that. Live commentary, um, this one here, Audient ID 22, that's my audio interface and that's what I'm recording with right now with the screen recording software. So I'm not going to select that. I've got it selected as my webcam. You can select whatever microphone you've got there. You can enable monitoring so you can hear yourself. And there's other options there. Threshold, attenuation. Now the Gato sound capture, there's some really cool options in here. You can see here, there's a lot of things you can do. Um, for example, you can capture your friend's audio when you're doing team chat, if you want to include them in the stream. Music, PC gaming, and there is a device I believe you can buy for like the PlayStation 4 and things like that where you can capture the audio from other people. So there's a lot of options here that you can use. Um, down at the bottom here, you've got, well, the, for me in YouTube, this is what I would upload. It would be the video title. It would be the game title and then the description and then tags. And you can see there, game level. Other op options at the top here, you can see, you can share Twitter, social media. You can edit the video. And here, there's some more preferences. So this is just the location of where you save your video. You know, you might want to save it to see um, Twitch videos, see YouTube videos, or anything like that. You can set it up any way you want. You can uh, where it's shared to when you do a video, export to separate files. Now this is a really cool feature as well, I'll go to that in a second. 
updates. You can say, assign hotkeys for starting, for recording, and stop recording, screenshots, etc. And here I've got my Intel Graphics 530 as the decoder. For the encoder, I'm using my graphics card, the Quadro M1000M. And you can assign the quality of that when you're recording and when you're streaming. Now, down here, I think this is a really good option. This is missing in a lot of other uh, streaming software and recording software. I like the fact that you can export the webcam and the sound capture and the live commentary audio separately to separate files. Because what that means is, if you do a recording, afterwards you can move the webcam around to any point you want. You can you know, position it, shrink it, expand it, and do what you want with it. It really is. gives you more options. It does require more editing afterwards. So if you just want to record and then upload, don't use that. But if you want a little bit more freedom afterwards to move things around, that's a very good option to use. I'll just up here. I'll go come out of the edit screen. So there it's there. It's um, I think I think it's quite good. I, I've generally been using OBS because it's a little bit uh, simpler, and it's got it gives me a little bit more options with you know multiple cameras and changing scenes and things like that. But I think they've done a really good job. It, it seems to work really well. I've tried. I've not streamed live, but I have did some recordings with it. it seemed to work really really well. It's very easy to use. I mean, you've you've saw how easy it is to use it. It isn't complicated, and I think most things here are self-explanatory. You know, once you set up the game audio at the right level, once you set up the microphone, once you've decided on your your streaming level and how you've set up your sound capture, you won't be changing here. Basically, when you come in, all you have to do when you when you log in, once you've configured it all, all you have to do is select a scene that is suitable for the game that you're playing, then change the description. Uh, if you're if you're streaming live, you would do all this. If you're not streaming live, it's irrelevant. But if you're streaming live, you choose a scene for the game that you're playing with, and make sure that you're recording at the same level. You can see I'm at 1080p, 30 frames per second. I might want to go up to 60, like that. Don't reduce. And then if I'm streaming live, I would have to set up the the title, the game, the description, and the tags and all that. Very very simple. Again, you can download this from Elgato's website. From the download area, go to the website and just go to downloads. I hope you found this tutorial useful. Just a quick look at how this works, but I hope I've given you an idea of how this works compared to other systems. If you're an OBS user or an XSplit user, you can see whether this is worth trying out. You might want to try something different. Um, yeah, I think overall it's a good little system. It's free to download, and if you're a streamer or you just want to record game footage, you might want to give it a try. Thanks for watching guys, if you get any questions please do leave a comment below and I'll speak to you all very soon. Take care.